day four of the electric car. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is my normal car, and then there's my sort of daily, my old Impreza WRX at the back there, but it needs a couple of bits done to it. Um, so, one of my bugbears with this car, I mean, I don't, to be honest, well, okay, I've got a few, but one of mine which is specific to the fact this is an electric car, all the cables hide under here, so that means that basically, when you want to get to them, you pretty much got to take all your stuff out the boots. So I'm actually going to maybe try and find somewhere different to put this because um, I'm going off somewhere this morning in the Lotus, which is going to be fun hopping back in an internal combustion engine car again. And um, when I get to my destination, so I'm driving off to my uh, girlfriend Claire's later on today, and I'll be staying at hers tonight. Now I should be able to get there quite easily on a on a tank, as it were. And then I'll charge up at hers overnight because she's got a parking space right outside her house, so that's not a problem. Uh, and then tomorrow I'm going off to visit someone, so I'll um, show you them tomorrow because you'll be interested in what they do. And um, it's just a bit inconvenient hoofing stuff out the boot every time. So I think they could have found somewhere better to put these cables. Where I'm not sure. Did they, even if they managed to put them like so, they were like hidden up, up, up here or just somewhere would have been easier rather than under here so at least this does fold a little bit so there is a crease in it so I can you see that there's a crease there so I can get into it if there's just a few things in the boot that's okay but when it's full you you're stuffed here's what we're gonna do we'll leap from mine which is sort of on the edge of Suffolk and Essex I have decided I'm going to go and meet my other half Claire in central London a couple of reasons for this number one I'm not really seeing her this much at all this week. I'm only seeing her tonight. So it would be nice to see her for a little bit longer. She normally gets the bus from central London back to her house. So by meeting her in London, just get to spend an extra hour or so with her. But also, one of the large benefits of having a fully electric car, not a hybrid, is that the congestion charge is free. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, if you want to drive into central London, really into the middle of the town, you have to pay a fee. It's an emissions related one and we call it the congestion charge. It was introduced ooh, over a decade ago by then London Mayor Ken Livingston. Hence its name for some people, the congestion charge. Anyway, that used to be about 10 quid and it was a little bit less. I think now it's about 12 pound or something. But they've recently introduced a charge with London's new mayor whose idea is to try and clean up the air by penalising poor people who've been conned into buying diesel cars over the last 15 years. So if I took an old diesel car, even one that met, say, Euro 4 standards, I'd have to pay, I think, another £10 on top of that. So over £20 just for the privilege of being able to drive into the middle of our capital. Now, by having a fully electric car, I actually don't have to pay a single penny, which is brilliant. Hybrids don't count. Now, I'm then going to be parking at a car park in Chinatown, the middle of London, Gerrard Street. Now, it's a very expensive car park, but... My theory is this, I normally park just outside the congestion charging zone, so I don't have to pay the money. Well, now I'm going to park inside it, I might as well take the money that I would have had to pay if I wanted to get in the zone, and use it to pay for a car park. So, there's a car park in Chinatown called the Chinatown Car Park. I can park there this evening for about £20. So I arrive at 6 and as long as I'm gone by about 2am, it's 20 quid, which for central London... Actually not that bad. If you guys are watching this from the USA, yeah, I'm afraid our car parking charges here... Um, Think San Francisco. That's about the closest I think you'll come to London prices. New York is probably about the same. But if you're in LA, uh, having a car here, not that cheap. Anyway, going to do that. That's going to be about a 70 mile journey. So that's going to use most of the car's range up. However, this car park I'm going to, I've picked for a good reason. It's got quite a few electric charging points. Apparently, it's about 16 of them. They should be fast charging points. So even if I'm only in town for about an hour, my aim is to go to uh, Shake Shack, which is something that we've recently arrived here. A couple of years ago, five guys appeared in the UK, and now we got Shake Shack as well. So, going to go try that out. That should be quite good. Then, by the time we've done that, car should be charged. Take it home to Claire's, which is probably another sort of 20 miles out. And then, big journey tomorrow. So I'll be charging it overnight at Claire's house. Hopefully it's going to make the journey tomorrow. So, I'm going to put some cameras in the car now, because the journey to London is always interesting, and I may have thoughts along the way I want to keep you guys up to date with, and I don't want to forget them, because this is an in-depth review. I promise to give you everything. Here's the everything. Now, I've had the car on charge for probably the longest period during my uh, ownership, as it were. Probably been on charge for about 20 hours. Now, 
whether that's related to it or whether it's just coincidence, I don't know. But when I got in the car, it gave me the most optimistic range I've seen out of it so far. It's 115 miles. and still some way short of the uh, standard test that was used until recently, which claims 155. Now, honestly, that test really annoys me because I think actually that's probably done more to harm the image of electric cars than anything else because Okay, now let's be honest here. Internal combustion engine, real world tests, you know, for range and all that stuff, and MPG, they're pretty inaccurate anyway, especially with the small turbocharged engines, and, and they are changing that test too. But with an electric vehicle, range seems to be a much, much bigger concern, certainly while it's still more or less an early adopter technology. And basically, I say basically a lot, don't I? Well, I'll try and find a better word to say what I want to say when I can, but here's the crux of the matter. I think a lot of people were conned into things or were misled by this woefully inaccurate test. So I really hope that these new figures, the new test that's coming out will improve the image of electric cars because you have a lot of people that were buying cars possibly off the back of numbers in brochures and things and if they were perhaps being quoted those by dealers who of course will often be told to quote the official numbers well well, for a start, you don't really want a dealer to say, oh, well, it says 155 in the brochure, but it never gets that. It's more like 110 or 100. So that's not very good, is it? That doesn't really give you a lot of confidence. And I feel it's a shame, really, because it's not their fault that the test the car is subjected to. The test isn't really performed by the manufacturer. The test is performed independently and to independent rules, of course. And that just sucks, really. So I'm, for one, I'm really glad that these new ones are coming in. And I think they're going to make things a lot easier for people wanting to purchase an electric vehicle, particularly those who have a daily commute. They've got one specific journey in mind. You know, let's say a lot of people that live near where I do and they commute to London and back. And with this car, you wouldn't have the range. Or maybe you just about to commute down and back without a charge. But add about 30 miles into that mix, you can commute back you can commute there and back at about 30 miles into that range and you could easily commute from where I live to London and back without a charge and that could be enough to make a lot of people make the switch basically I said basically again Ah! so you recall I whinged like almighty hell about the low battery warning level ah uh, yeah there's a menu here where you can set that. Uh, so at the minute it's got a low battery warning at 25%, which is fine, uh, and it was set on uh, every minute warning. So you can set it to every minute, every three minutes, five minutes, or don't repeat the warning. So obviously I've changed that to don't repeat. So uh, yeah, sorry. You've also got a little screen where it tells you how eco you're driving, and it's got a tree on it, because obviously actually I'm gonna turn eco off, because I don't like eco mode. Eco modes annoy me. Uh, oh, you can also set the car to only charge at certain times, which is very handy because basically it means that you can. Uh, obviously, if you've got business rate electricity, so some places in the UK you can get preferential rates on your electricity at night. So you can tell the car to only take the electricity at a specified time. You could also tell it to set the internal temperature of the vehicle to your preferred setting for a certain time, which is actually quite fun and quite cool. I know a few cars do that now, but that's something that's from a higher end vehicle. One of the big problems with the EVs, because they are a lot more expensive, you know, they're at least £10,000 more expensive really than the car would normally be because of that EV element. So it's nice to see tech like this making an appearance. And if you do have a daily routine, if you're one of those people, it's great because you know, in winter you can make sure the car is warmer and in summer you can make sure the car is nice and cool. There's not really a problem with the vegan seats. Winter would be an interesting time to own. Winter would be an interesting time to own one of these because batteries do not like the cold. I know with my own batteries and all the filming kit and stuff, they tend to last, if it's really cold, 30% shorter than normal, if not even shorter. So, how will these cope with the British winter? I don't know. What is the top speed of a Kia Soul EV? 
on the website kia.com, they say, as incredibly green as the Soul Ev is with zero CO2 emissions, it still manages a class leading 0 to 100 km per hour acceleration and a top speed of 145 km per hour. How much is 145 kilometers per hour? 145 kilometers per hour equals 40.278 meters per second. How much is that in miles per hour? 40.278 meters per second equals 90.099 miles per hour. Are the machines going to take over? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that yet, but I'm trying to learn. Yeah, that's what we're worried about. <laughs> oh, she's pumping poison gas in here. She's gonna kill me. Have you heard of Skynet? I'm glad Skynet is just fictional. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, your evil master's more like. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, let's ask a really tough one. Is Deadpool 2 any good? Deadpool 2 scored 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. You just missed it. There was an advertisement on this billboard up here for a Harley Street dentist. Harley Street's a very fancy place, not a Harley Street dentist. It said, let your teeth sparkle like Meghan Markle, I think. What the hell? Just, just, why? Who cares? Who cares? This is a route that I actually haven't driven in quite a long time. I used to drive it very, very frequently. I used to come into London a lot for meetings when I still worked in film. I used to have a parking spot, a really cool, fairly well-hidden spot that seemed pretty under the radar. And that was by the London Eye. That's probably a good landmark. There you go. Cyclists. This is why people hate them. You, you drive on the road. I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, um, I used to drive here a lot. So you go down here. There's some cool sites. I'll show them to you guys because I don't often show London in my videos. I don't come to London because... If you want to do car stuff, London is one of the worst places in the world to do it. I don't care for car spotting. I, I mean, I like seeing nice cars, of course, but I would never go somewhere explicitly to car spot. What a boring thing to go and do. I want to drive cars. That's the enjoyable thing. I've got a license. That's what I want to do. Yes, yeah, so you just pull out in front of me. You better put your foot down. Ancient Kia. Uh, you know, what are they? The Karens. I think it's Karens. Um, so, huge amount of building work going on down here. Uh, we're currently coming up to Whitechapel, very famous for being the area Jack the Ripper was in. And uh, if you're a fan of the television show Ripper Street, uh, we're soon going to be going down Lehman Street, which is the headquarters of the police station, or the, you know, the, the, the department, whatever they're called, I can't remember, the constabulary. That are featured in the show. So you get pedestrians that are quite um, kinetic, shall we say, around here. They kind of do what they want and they really, really don't care. I suppose now would be a good a time as any to ask you guys if you've stuck with the video this long. I want to thank you, of course, and I hope you're enjoying it so far. What's your relationship with the electric Why are you watching this? Do you already own an electric car and you're, you know, just here at Curiosity? Are you thinking about buying one? Do you maybe already own a hybrid? I'd love to know. Put something in the comments. I'd love to know what's drawn you to this video and also to stick with it and see how I'm getting on because I've got to be honest, I will of course deliver my full conclusion at the end, but on day four, you know, the idea is, is growing on me. A few weeks ago, people said to me, electric car, and I said, Starting to see the appeal, and this is not this is not a sexy electric car. This would not be the one that I would buy, I don't think. But 
it's been a very enlightening experience so I just want to say thanks again to Kia for making this possible they are pretty cool people honestly they've been so nice to deal with literally I just said to them can I have the car please yep no problem it just arrived on Monday and it'll vanish next Monday very very hassle free really nice people did you know as well Kia fifth largest car maker in the world they're bigger than Ford you wouldn't believe that. I certainly didn't when I first heard it, but that's the truth. One thing they have an awful lot of in London, and along with a lot of cities in the United Kingdom, is bus lanes. Now, the bus lane is for buses, cyclists, and most of the time, motorcyclists as well. Taxis can normally also use them. However, don't confuse it with a carpool lane. I know in the United States, uh, especially in places like California, if you've got an EV, one of the benefits is that you can then ride in the carpool lane even if there's only one of you in the car. Now, carpool lanes aren't something that really exist in the United Kingdom. I've seen them, I think there's one up in Liverpool or somewhere like that, but generally I don't see them because we tend not to have the space to put them in. And you know what, most people are just one person in a car anyway. It is a bit wasteful, to be quite honest. They, we should use them, but we haven't got the space in the places that we need them. Yeah. Okay. So, you can't use the bus lane if you've got an EV. Uh, I mean, they may change that rule, but I somehow doubt it, because London's the first place that really started using electric cars for various reasons, most of it money saving, I would think. There's this tiny little electric car called the G-Wiz. I used to see those even when I lived in London about 10 years ago. I think they were probably very popular with bankers who just wanted to have a free car they could drive around in and dodge the congestion charge. So, but a G-Wiz though is not, not a cool car. London has also grown an extraordinary number of 20 mile an hour speed limits. It's one of the reasons I don't like driving through it anymore, because frankly, you can only do 20 mile an hour in London at the best of times, but then when it's say the dead of night, where you can easily and safely do 30 miles an hour, you can't, so progress is really, really restricted. Also, I think it makes things quite dangerous, because they now want this rule, they want you to give a meter and a half to pass a cyclist. Well, they don't give a meter and a half when they're passing cars and if it works one way surely it should work the other and also a cyclist a good cyclist can do 20 mile an hour pretty easy so having cars doing basically the same speed just makes things more awkward there's speed cameras everywhere in the city so people spend more time looking at the speedo than looking at the road to me that's dangerous but you know what do I know you know in Bath they introduced a 20 mile an hour limit and the number of accidents went up. And they then conceded that they made things worse, but they weren't going to put it back because it had cost so much money to put the 20 mile an hour limit in, they couldn't then spend the same money to take the 20 mile an hour limit back out. <sighs> Why the number of accidents went up in that particular case, I don't really know because, well, shouldn't have but I think it's perhaps just a false sense of security on the part of pedestrians who think that because there's a 20 limit they can just wander in the road or maybe it has problems with cyclists who knows but that's true you don't believe me google it I tell you one thing that Kia have actually got sorted out and that works nicely and logically in this car the electric parking brake I'm in drive now I should come to a stop with my foot still on the brake pull parking brake button up like you should do it should always be a pull up to engage in my opinion and then when I want to move I simply put my foot on the accelerator car moves releases parking brake simple well done Kia that's good design uh, coming up in just a moment you will get a view of the absolutely stunning and iconic tower bridge often erroneously called London Bridge, mostly by tourists and actually by a lot of English people that don't know the difference. Uh, Tower Bridge is the nice big fancy one. London Bridge looks pretty plain in comparison. 
I'm not going over it today. Instead, I shall be staying on the north side of the Thames, heading westward into central London. I could go over the bridge if I wanted to, but it'll take me the wrong side of the river, and trust me, being the wrong side of the river, at half past five, it's a nightmare. It really, really is. I appear to have made an error. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I'm going over Tower Bridge. Oh, I should have turned right earlier. Completely my mistake. Yep. Oh, dear. Okay. Yes, I meant to go over Tower Bridge. I wasn't intending to, but I'm showing you Tower Bridge now because it's spectacular. Unfortunately, it's really easy to get across the river at this time of day. It's a lovely, beautiful day, it's pretty scenery, I'm really not too fast. What it does mean is I'm pretty certain to get to the car park after six. Never mind. Right, 500 years later and I'm finally in the bloody car park. Now, there's a mixture down here, if you look over there, see those are just 13 amp sockets, which is kind of not what I want, because that's just a domestic socket, that's not cool. I want a proper socket, like this thing here. Why that car's part there, I don't know, because it doesn't look very electric to me. But this is actually the first one of these I've come across which actually explicitly mentioned anything about money. You can just put a contactless card on here, which is quite good because if you've not signed up to anything, you can do it. Or you can use your Polar card, and it's a bit cheaper as well using the Polar card. So I'm gonna put Polar card on here. Oh, it's got Polar membership card. Okay, checking my card. Ah, oh, welcome, James Martin. That is me. And then. Slip charging time, Shadow Mo. Who's connected here? Come on, I believe this is the Shadow Mo connector. Yep, that's the big bad boy. Ah, oh, look at that meaty thing. There we connected, safety checks being carried out, same process as it was the other day. The car's got about 43 miles worth of electricity in it still, which is pretty good. So, uh, oh, that's turned all red now, so I don't know. But that means it's, oh yeah, the juice is coming through. So, the car's telling me 42%, so we're going to go off and have a burger. I'm going to try Shake Shack for a change. Right. Right, so we've been into town, had burger, uh, Shake Shack. Eh, it's all right, maybe a bit, the Emperor's No Clothes. Our favourite is a place called Kua Aina, or Kua Aina. It's a Hawaiian burger place, there's two of them in London, so, you know, check those guys out, because they're, they're nice, like, lava flavour. Actually, can I say lava in Hawaii and get them in it? I don't know, it's a bit topical, isn't it? Any, anyway, they're, they're from a Hawaiian type origin, they know I'm sure you over. Anyway, they're, they're, that's my favourite burger place in London, anyway. Really good burgers, check those guys out. There's one in Carnaby Street and one in, uh, one in Goose Street. So, car's been charging, and you're only supposed to be in these bases for about two hours tops, which I think I haven't been here that long, so that's okay. So, go up to here, and uh, basically, I think I just, uh, I got a polar, because I've got to get this out. I can't take it out yet, so hopefully it will say now that it, because it already knows I'm here. Well, I'm, what's going on here? I'm going to cancel, I want to take the car away. I haven't been here for that long. How do I? Let me see if I've got, I've got the keys in my pocket, so I, I should. Trying to disconnect the damn thing. Should I pause? No, no, it's fine, it's fine. This is a electric knife. Oh, there we go. That's unplugged. So there we go. In that's closed and let's see how much juice I managed to acquire. I mean I think there's a chance it could be full. So let's see. It's a bit awkward getting in this space forwards. I don't normally like parking like an idiot. I have no choice otherwise, here. Yeah. <laughs> it's full! I buzzed with the phone, and then, uh, yeah, so, ha ha! I charged while I had a burger. Happy days! And literally just within 90 minutes, too. Oof.